Hey everybody, welcome back to our Liberty House. I'm Lucas. Today is the seventh seed video, seedling video. We're gonna be planting today, uh, planting some center cut squash, some zucchini, yellow squash, cucumbers, flowers, basil. This is our second uh, round of seeds. They were started on March 22nd, so about a month ago, and they're looking great. The weather's warmer, you know, we're getting daytime highs in the 80s and you know night times above 50 so it's a perfect time to get your squashes and cucumbers and stuff like that in okay a little closer look at what's been started some zucchini squash starting to branch out uh, you know they got their true leaves different flowers and um, these are the center cut squash um, they kind of are like a zucchini slash hard squash hybrid. Uh, these butternuts, we've had really good success with this seed brand. Uh, we can link in the description. It's like the perfect size for two people. Um, some basil. They'll go in between all of the tomato plants, which we'll show you guys later from last transplanting video. These are like giant zinnias that bloom all year, like all the way until we ripped them out in December. So we're going back to those. Um, some yellow crookneck squash. These are the Armenian cucumbers that we're trying for the first time this year. It's supposed to be a little bit more heat tolerant. And then some cantaloupes and just a couple Swiss shards. So what we're gonna do next is move these all into position. Um, we're gonna make sure we have them all in the right spot and then get them transplanted and we're going to use the uh, mycorrhiza again and you know just some fertilizer to get them kick started first i want to talk about what we're going to be planting on our trellises you know like vertical gardening maximizing you know our square footage so last year we had all of our tomatoes and back here and this year we're going to give a little bit of a break and so we're doing um, these armenian cucumbers um, these did get a little leggy, but they should be just fine. And then um, we're going to do some, I like to direct seed the beans. They don't really take transplants super well. So we're going to do some beans on the other side. And just like last video, um, everything's going to get pre-fertilized with the 772 from down to earth. And also we'll do the water soluble mycorrhiza after we get them planted. Okay, so, you know, for some tips on like vertical gardening using a trellis is I like to plant like just like half the plant underneath it and right like cl really close to the trellis. Um, and then your spacing can be a lot tighter with vertical gardening because we're relying on that vertical square footage rather than, you know, a cucumber plant that's going to need a couple feet at least to grow. So these will grow, I mean, they're gonna start, they're not natural climbers, so we'll have to train them up here. And then we'll just use some, some ties and then they'll get weaved in and out and they'll branch out a little bit. So we could probably even grow six in this amount of space, you know, about two feet, and we're just gonna do four. Uh, but you can definitely pack more in when you're growing vertically. Here's the center cut squash from row seven seeds. These are, they're a type of trombocino. You know, they do kind of hold longer than a summer squash, but you can also eat the skins like a zucchini. So we didn't have great success with them last year. We're trying them again. Uh, the few we did get were really tasty. So hopefully this is a better spot for them to grow, but they definitely like to climb just like a lot of our other plants for utilizing that vertical gardening space. Here we're just using the Plant Success water-soluble mycorrhiza again, just to help with that microbial growth and 
It really help inoculate the soil and, and feed the microbes, which then feed your plants. Okay, moving over here, we are going to do our butternut squash. Um, these have been really great on the arch trellis, so we're mixing it up this year and putting on this vertical trellis. And you can see how great that compost is looking, that nice dark soil, purple little area. And then we always like to use this organic fertilizer. You really don't have to measure as much because it's really hard to over fertilize with organic fertilizer. You know, and it's more sustainably made and, and it doesn't really damage your microbial growth, you know, that soil health. Um, so it's really important, you know, to use a, a good organic fertilizer. And here we're just splitting these up again. You know, we're cramming them in, you know, space-wise compared to a normal squash, uh, just because we are, like I said in the past, taking advantage of that vertical space. So good fertilizer, good spacing, good soil, and then Plants should be great to go and then just water soluble mycorrhiza in there as well here in a little bit and planting away. You just want to pack everything, you know, down in here. Um, you know, these aren't nightshades, so you don't really want to bury their stem, but just, just to the crown of the plant is, is about right. Um, it is also good to wet your seedlings before you pull them out of their pots just so they don't get too transplant shocked if you're not going to like water them in right away. And even watering a little bit of the soil, getting it damp, um, will help from that real immediate transplant shock. Give them a little press and water them in. All right, we started some cantaloupe too, and then didn't really have a spot for them in our garden. And we had this extra trellis. So we've never really grown melons successfully in Sacramento, and we've never grown them vertically either. So stick with us, subscribe to the channel. We'll you know, update you know, on our monthly garden tours, kind of how this is going. But we're just gonna drop these cantaloupes and try to trellis them up this. All right, next two things are going to be our uh, regular zucchini summer squash and then a yellow crookneck squash. And we're going to be using these um, tree boxes just because zucchini take up so much space. And, you know, summer squash, they get so wide. This will keep them nice and contained. Um, we're also using these deep drip uh, stakes that um, we've talked about in other videos. So that'll be right next to it. Same fertilizer. Pretty good root structure. Oops. Put 
it in there. You know, all this was topped with compost um, when we did our initial planting in our last video. All right, and then the deep drip will go next to it. We'll water that in with the mycorrhiza. And we'll get the other one done. Now this is our yellow crookneck. We actually, the soil's really soft because it's had potatoes growing in it that were volunteers. And so we'll do the same. Mix this in. So when you're planting them, it just, you don't need to bury, you don't have to bury them like you know, other plants are just like right at the crown. Pretty easy. And then we have the deep drip, um, but I have to fix this one because this is more of a stake. So quick little side note on these deep drips. Um, you know, this is a just like a stake style, which won't fit in the into the deep drip stake. Let's cut these off. I just use a regular bubbler. You can use a drip emitter too. I like these because they're a little bit more adjustable. Um, so then here's the deep drips. You can see they have holes. Uh, they come in different sizes. You know, these are the ones that they recommend for, you know, vegetable gardening. Um, but we have really, you know, like 24 inches for trees and different things. So all you would do, and you put your stake kind of where you want it. And then you put that in. And then it has the little... <sighs> nook for the... The drip line and then that's it um, it's nice too because you can here's one of the extra ones you can put water soluble or liquid fertilizer in there like throughout the year and then it'll get right down into the roots All right, so pretty common thing that people do is plant basil in between the tomato plants um, just because the tomato plants will help shade it out a little bit and keep your basil from going to flower um, we really should have started these a little bit earlier, but they should be fine. If not, we'll have to buy some bigger plants, but hopefully these tomatoes will shade out our little basils. So we want one right here. You know, we'll just go down the line here and put some of the extra ones in between. All right, so just checking back in with um, our seedlings, the tomatoes we planted three weeks ago in our previous seed update. Um, looking really great. Have been pruning off uh, most of the suckers, uh, just trying to get them to um, get through the trellis. So we're weaving them in and out. You can see, and I just use these little tomato bread ties and you, so you can cut them to length um, and just kind of really train them. You almost don't even need these all the time because uh, you can just weave them, but sometimes it's good to like pull them in tight. Um, you know, just so they they kind of know where they need to go. So really when these are just after they're transplanted and soon they start growing, just start pushing them one way and then so that you see this one's growing on this side and then now this one will start growing on this side, you know, and see how I got this bread tie on this cherry tomato over here and then he's ready to go to this side um, and he's actually starting to flower. So 
There's a whole video on tomato trellising and pruning that we did last summer and we're not changing anything. I'm gonna let these sucker once they get about here to two. So we'll have two main leaders for every tomato plant going up. All right, final little update is all these peppers that were also planted three weeks ago. All looking good. And we're gonna go right into, we're gonna be topping them. So be on the lookout for that video talking about topping peppers this year. All right, everybody, that's the update, the last seed update of this year. We got everything planted. The summer garden is planted. You know, that's super exciting. We're gonna roll right into a lot of great summer content this year. You know, Beth's gonna be doing a garden tour every month. You know, so we got a couple more flowers to plant. I'm sure she'll show you guys that. You know, we're gonna talk about peppers a lot more this year. We're gonna do some tomato reviews. So really make sure you subscribe to the channel. You know, check us out. You can go look at all of our playlists, all of our summer garden tour playlists. We have a whole seed starting playlist. So make sure you guys follow along. Looking forward to the summer. Have a great day.